Member for Vancouver West End. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Well, um, I must admit, standing today is uh, to speak on this legislation, on Bill 16, on changes to the Residential Tenancy Act, uh, feels a little unbelievable to me as uh, for nine years I sat on the other side of the House uh, and from the first day I was here, the first speech I gave have been calling for changes to the Residential Tenancy Act to help renters. To help renters facing mass eviction, to help renters facing massive rent hikes, to help renters facing unfairness in their ability to live in their home in peace. Uh, and these are tough stories. I can think back. Faces come to mind more than names now. I used to be great with names, but nine years in, you start to forget names and just remember faces and stories of people who would come to my office, people who would stop me on the street, uh, people who would, I would speak with on the phone, and I remember the, the sound of their voice as they shared their anguish. They'd done everything right. They'd followed the rules. They'd worked incredibly hard to maintain a good life. Uh, sometimes they were conservative. Sometimes they were liberal. Sometimes they were green. Sometimes they were new Democrat. Most of the time, they had no political persuasion at all. They just wanted to be able to live a good life in their home. They followed their residential tenancy agreement. They paid respect to their landlord. They were happy to have a roof over their head. And unfortunately, for far too many of them, they were too trusting. And I, it gave me such pain to hear that when they said, you know, I trusted my landlord when they said I needed to sign this new agreement, sign a new lease, sign this piece of paper to just update the record would often be how it would be sold to them. Often seniors being approached by their friendly landlord, or so they thought, their friendly building manager, or so they thought, and told to sign this new updated contract. And they would come to me and say, uh, what do I do now? They're telling me I'm being evicted next month. I've done nothing wrong, and I'd asked to see the paperwork, and unfortunately, they would have been tricked into signing a fixed-term tenancy agreement, self-evicting at the end of their term, often a year. This bill, finally, finally, after the opposition, advocacy groups, and so often the renters themselves talk to the media, pled with ministers, pled with MLAs to act. Finally, a government is acting. Finally, after nine years of trying to raise this sort of issue in the House, we now have a government on this side of the House who will act. Within its first hundred days, this bill was brought forward. And I'm so proud of the new Democrat government for hearing this call, for committing to act, and for actually acting. Because fixed-term tenancies have been the plague of so many people's, and my constituents in particular, lives. They've lost their homes or they've signed new agreements because they could not possibly imagine leaving their community that they agreed to 30 percent rent increases, 50 percent rent increases in some cases, just in order to stay in their home. And in many cases, uh, these were people on pensions. I think of folks on pensions, fixed incomes, agreeing to 20 percent rent increases because they were so afraid that they would never be able to find a home to rent in our neighborhood again, that they agreed to take money from their food budget to pay for the rent because the former government refused to end this practice. You know, over a year, two years ago, the then housing minister, now leader of the official opposition, promised the public that they would end this practice. They'd heard that this was a problem. They'd heard that people's lives were being harmed, were being hurt. They were going to act to end the fixed-term tenancy con. And I say con, Honourable Speaker, because people were conned into signing agreements that they didn't have to. They trusted people, and they, lacked, they lost trust. And it's horrible to me, Honourable Speaker, that I had to talk to them about how, yes, some people are, are untrustworthy, how, yes, some people did break their promises, how, yes, their landlord may have been breaking their word to them and tricking them into signing things they never should have done. But I had to counsel them that, yes, they needed to get advice more often. They needed to seek a second opinion before agreeing to sign anything. The number of times, Honourable Speaker, I had to send letters into buildings in my constituency, letting everybody in the building know that a few people in the building had been conned and that they might be next are too many to list, Honourable Speaker. It's something that gave me no pleasure to have to write to renters to say, 
I understand that your neighbors have been tricked into signing fixed-term tenancy agreements. I didn't use those words, Honourable Speaker. I just laid out the act as it was and said they didn't have to sign anything. But too often it was too late. People would come to say, I wish I'd known this earlier, but I was conned. You know, Honourable Speaker, that con ends with this bill. No longer will my constituents have to face a landlord coming to them saying, well, sign today and I won't, I won't do this. Sign today and maybe, you know, you won't lose your home, but maybe you will. Just update your contract now in terms of fixed terms. There are other things that we need to change in the Residential Tenancy Act, like geographic area increases to name one, uh, the, the challenges of rent evictions to name two, and I could give you a longer list, Honourable Speaker, that I'm working on and that I know our government is working on, but this is a really good first step because it was being abused to get around the residential tenancy uh, controls, uh, the rent controls, in a big, big way. And the former government refused. We are acting. The other thing this bill does, Honourable Speaker, and I'm really happy to see it, is it's actually finally going to help allow a government to go after bad apples. Now, I say bad apples because it's a quote coming from the now leader of the opposition, who, when he was housing minister, numerous times would say, we're getting tough on those bad apples, those bad apple landlords. We're going to make sure that they don't harm those poor renters. And he would say it again and again and again and again. Anytime I raised a case where clearly a tenant was being abused, they would pull, well, we changed the act so that we can go after those bad apple landlords, he'd say. And then he never did. It was a great soundbite for TV, but it offered no comfort and no assistance to the tenants actually in those situations. This bill is allowing us to actually uh, enforce administrative penalties. So if somebody is breaking the law, if somebody is lying, is cheating, is finding some way around the rules, and they get caught, we're actually now going to be able to go after them. You know, there was legislation introduced, I think, 2006, 2007, by the former government that they could point to, and they pointed to it numerous times, saying, see, we introduced administrative penalties, so we can go after those people who break the laws, so we can go after those people who, uh, who cheat at the residential tenancy system. But they never actually did, Honourable Speaker. This law change that we're bringing in is going to give the government the ability to actually, say, provide us evidence to, if somebody is cheating in the system, to say, we're going to compel you to give us the documents so we can check your facts. So we don't just have to rely on your word. We can actually see whether or not you're telling the truth by looking at the evidence. So all those bad apple landlords that the former uh, housing minister used to talk about, they could just say, well, no, uh, we didn't break the rules. And we had no ability, the government had no ability to actually go in and check, to really go in and find out if that, in fact, was true. So of course penalties could never be levied. So here we are, probably about 10 years after, 10 years after that legislation was brought in to allow administrative penalties to be issued by re residential tenancy branch, 10 years later we're actually putting in place rules to make that possible. It strikes me as uh, incredibly disrespectful for renters and landlords across this province that a government said that we're going to go after the bad apples 10 years ago and then it never did, never made that actually possible. Well, Honourable Speaker, we're making that possible. And not just bad apple landlords, bad apple tenants. If they're breaking the rules again and again and again and again, and there's a pattern, the residential tenancy branch will be able to go after them, to find them, to hit them with penalties, so that clearly they're not able to do that again. So it's no longer just the cost of doing business. Because, Honourable Speaker, the current context had been, the current context has been that even if you get caught breaking the rules, it's a slap on the wrist with a wet noodle. Told, don't do that again until you come back again the next month after having done it again. And you're told, don't do that again, and then another slap with the wet noodle. That's how this act so far has been enforced. I'm really pleased that that is going to change. Because not only is this act going to allow them to compel evidence, but it's going to allow a proper procedure done that will stand up to the, in courts of law so that they can actually show they've spent procedural fairness, so that everybody gets a fair chance to be heard, so that you can actually do the right thing. So we, we've changed the law, and of course with the budget changes where we're actually going to hire compliance officers so that you can actually go out and enforce the law, because that's the other thing, Honourable Speaker, introducing a law and then not actually hiring anybody to enforce the law, and as we've uh, earlier stated, not actually giving the law the teeth to actually be enforced, 
You might as well not have even introduced that law. But we're fixing that wrong now, Honourable Speaker, because landlords and tenants deserve so much better. Compelling documents, conducting investigations, procedures for administrative penalty procedures to actually be uh, fair. You have to do those things, Honourable Speaker, and that's something that the BC Liberal government refused to do numerous times for their 16 years of being in government. Within the first 100 days, we introduced legislation to do that because we do respect landlords and tenants. We do respect renters' rights, and we think that they deserve their rights to be actually respected. And we do respect the law, and if people are breaking the law, they should actually be penalized, Honourable Speaker, not just slapped with a wet noodle, as had been the previous practice uh, when the uh, Leader of the Opposition was the Housing Minister. If that, Honourable Speaker, if that one notorious case was a building was collapsing in on its tenants, they were hit with, I think, a $400,000 fine. I, I was so excited. Administrative penalties were actually finally being used. But you know what the government did, at the former government, I should say, is they let that landlord off the hook by saying, oh, well, you've repaired the building, so it's no longer a death trap for your tenants. Well, we're not going to fine you anymore. You, you didn't follow the law. You broke the law numerous times. You required tons of taxpayer resources to be used to go after you. But now you've finally complied with the law. We're not going to charge you the fine that we gave you, even though you profited by breaking the law and the taxpayers suffered. That was the previous government's approach to bad landlords and uh, dealing with the Residential Tenancy Act. That's not the way it's going to be, I hope, any longer, Honourable Speaker. We need to respect the law, and that means respecting landlords and respecting tenants. So, Honourable Speaker, I just want to finish by saying the other thing in this bill is returning security deposits and pet damage deposits faster. That's something that this legislation is also going to help make possible. Uh, believe it or not, Honourable Speaker, I once had a senator, an American senator, uh, from one of the eastern states come to my constituency office. Uh, I said, a senator? That's a big deal. You're a big deal in the states. You have lots of staff. You're uh, an important person. Uh, what are you doing uh, visiting a lowly member of the legislature uh, and one in opposition to boot? Uh, and she said, well, it's because my daughter can't get back her damage deposit. Her, da her daughter was studying, I think, in uh, uh, Vancouver, had rented in the West End, couldn't get a damage deposit back from the landlord. Now, the landlord, in my experience, was a bit notorious for not giving back damage deposits, for finding ways to uh, uh, game the system and hope that residents and renters would never actually go through all the rigmarole of trying to get them to give it back, hope that they would leave town, as the case of uh, the senator's daughter was about to leave town, and she wanted help then so that they could actually get the damage deposit back. Well, eventually she did, but it took many months, and it took a lot of trying, uh, assistance from my office, from the Tenants Resource Advisory Center, uh, gummed up the residential tenancy system, all because the landlord knew that on a probability case, many tenants would give up and wouldn't continue to press the case. Uh, and then they would profit from never having to give it the damage deposit back. Uh, well, while we helped and solved that problem, this bill is going to make it much easier for expedited return of damage deposits and pet deposits. And when you're in an affordability crisis as we are, and many people are living paycheck to paycheck, a damage deposit might be the only thing that they can, that they might be their only chunk of money that they need in order to get a new apartment, uh, or in order to uh, pay a big bill, or pay a debt, or, or pay moving expenses. Uh, down the road, and, and so it's really important that these damage deposits not be held as a maybe you get it back, maybe you don't, maybe you'll get it back in six months' times, maybe you won't, maybe you'll have to go to small claims court or something like that. No, people deserve the money. It's their money as long as they've not damaged the suite. Uh, and so, you know, a shout out to my renter friends out there. Make sure you take pictures, if you can, of the suite before you move in. Make sure you get a condition assessment report done before you move in, because those are very important things uh, down the road to get your damage deposit back. And if your landlord doesn't give you a condition assessment report, they can't claim your damage deposit back. That's just a little note, uh, an FYI for folks uh, back at home, because a lot of people don't know their rights when it comes to Residential Tenancy Act uh, rules. So uh, again, for the, those in my constituency who currently are on fixed terms, and Unfortunately, some developers have decided to use fixed terms exclusively in their buildings because they can get around rent controls, and it seemed to be given the go-ahead by the former government. 
Um, this act will also make it so that your fixed term becomes a month-to-month -month tenancy, unless uh, you'd already agreed to move out or unless um, uh, a, uh, another tenant before this legislation uh, was offered had already signed a tenancy agreement to move into that suite. Um, but for everybody else, if you're coming up to the end of the year where your landlord normally says to you, well, it's time again to sign another fixed term and we're going to give you a $100 a month rent increase or a $200 a month rent increase or you'll be evicted, you're going to move to a month to month and that's going to mean that you get the annual allowable rent increase, not a massive rent increase uh, uh, of the hundreds and hundreds of dollars variety that the former Liberal government seemed to think was appropriate, uh, affordable and acceptable. Uh, they were dead wrong then. They said it was too hard to change. Well, within 100 days, we showed that it's not too hard to change. It's not too hard to have respect for renters and landlords. It's not too hard to do the right thing. And that's why I'm so glad to be uh, supporting this legislation. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm so incredibly proud of my colleagues. Uh, and, and I want to say thank you to them for listening to my cries for help on this, for listening to the renters of BC's cries for help on this, and so many others who've advocated on this issue. Thank you for advocating. It's been worth the fight. It's been worth the persistence, and I just know that uh, those who are going to be helped in future uh, are, are, it's going to make such a difference for, for too many people uh, who've had to deal with this horror show that has been the fixed term tenancy con for far too long. So I'm so glad we can support this legislation, uh, and thank you, Honourable Speaker.